Hi everyone, it's Patty Alaka back with some tools for living. I hope that you're feeling well today, but even if you're not, I'm really glad that you've chosen to spend this time with me. I'm really excited about what the Lord has put on my heart to speak about today. Today we're going to talk about popcorn prayer. Have you ever heard of popcorn pray prayer? Well, the Lord has a lot to say about that, but before we get started, let's go to prayer as the Lord reminds us to pray without ceasing. Heavenly Father, wonderful Lord Jesus, glorious Holy Spirit, we come to your throne on our knees in humility today, Lord. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You're all that exists. Everything that we do and everything that we don't do is for you and for your glory. We give praise and honor and glory to your holy name for all the ways that you're working in our lives, Lord. And Lord, I thank you for bringing me and whoever is watching this video into this space right here, right now, Lord. And we ask that you heal us physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and relationally. Teach us what it is that you would like us to know. Not my words, but your words, Lord. Not my will, but your will, Lord. We ask all of this in your powerful and mighty name, Lord Jesus. Amen. So thank you so much for being here today. I'm really excited about this topic. I love to pray. Do you love to pray? Praying is just simply having a conversation with God. You know, we are so blessed to have the Trinity, the Father that made us, the Son that saved us, and the Holy Spirit that lives within us is with us at all times, always. And all we need to do is to call him right into our heart. He truly is with us every moment of every hour of every day, no matter where we go, no matter what we do. And he wants us to pray to him. He wants us to have a conversation with him. He wants us to keep our eyes on him as we go through all of our circumstances. And what I love about popcorn prayer is that it gives everybody an opportunity to learn how to pray. Let's take a pause for a moment. Let's take a step back, breathe, invite the Lord into your heart. And let me ask you, what is your prayer life like? Do you pray? How often do you pray? There's no judgment. It's just really getting an understanding about what your prayer life is like. The Lord just wants us to talk with him and we can all step it up. No matter how much we pray, no matter how little we pray, we can all improve our prayer life. And this is a wonderful opportunity for us to get in touch with that, that truly we can pray all day long, we truly can pray without ceasing, as the Lord uh, reminds us to do. And when we focus on popcorn prayer, I want you to think about popcorn. Do you like popcorn? Have you ever eaten popcorn? Have you ever made popcorn? Let's think about this metaphor for a moment. Popcorn. How do you pop your popcorn? Uh, do you put uh, the kernels in a pot with a little bit of oil and put it over a hot flame of fire and watch it pop, 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 pop. And as you notice, the kernels, um, they don't pop in an order. They randomly, spontaneously pop, right? Or if you put them in an air popper, the kernels, there is not a row uh, which one is gonna pop next. They pop randomly and spontaneously. And so the idea is that when we uh, are engaged in popcorn prayer, it's when we're with a group of people, particularly with people that are not used to praying. It's such a beautiful thing to do. So I want to encourage you to think about this in your conversations with people, when you're with other people, when you're with a group of people, you know, sometimes in this world, you know, the Lord tells us that we're going to experience tribulation, but to be of good cheer because he has overcome the world. And you would always find Jesus going out into the desert or up on the mountain. Um, or over to the other side, praying, praying, praying to Abba Father. And so we're encouraged to do the same thing. So when we're in a group of people, often there'll be a conversation about whatever. And sometimes that whatever conversation can take a downward spiral. And so we may be talking about what we're worried about or what we're sad about, but we're talking about what we're thinking about and everyone in the room is is talking about what they're thinking about but wouldn't it be wonderful to instead of just talking about it to just say hey guys let's pray about it and so everyone in the room has the opportunity to pray 
And that's what popcorn prayer is. If you can picture yourself as a colonel, let's say you're in a group of people, you're a colonel and the person next to you is a colonel and, and everyone in the room is a colonel. And we can just imagine the Holy Spirit, which is known to come as fire and as air, ignites those thoughts and we can turn our eyes upward to our amazing Lord and we can offer up our thought in a prayer. So in other words, instead of thinking, boy, I really wish I had a better relationship with this person, you can, or, and start to talk about the negative things about this person, let's just say hypothetically, you can instead say, Lord, I don't know what's happening. Lord, please transform my mind. Please transform this other person's mind, Lord. Heal whatever is in the space between the two of us. Help me to become a better version of myself. Help this person to become a better version of themselves so that we can become who it is that you truly have created us to be. That would be a popcorn prayer. Whatever is on your heart, we can offer praise. Lord, thank you for the sunshine. Lord, thank you for the beautiful weather. Lord, thank you for the rain. Lord, thank you for the day off. Lord, thank you for prompting me to go for a walk today. You know, whatever it is that you're you're praising the Lord about, it doesn't matter. We, we're counting our blessings. When we can focus on what we're grateful for, we open up our heart and we can keep our eyes fully on the Lord. So instead of just counting your blessings, we can say, Lord, thank you for this. Thank you for that. And Lord, please help me with this. Lord, please help me with that. So I want to encourage you in your quiet prayer time and also when you're with a group of people to not just think and not just complain about whatever's going on, but offer that thought up to the Lord and ask the Lord to help you to transform your heart, your mind, your spirit, and pray over that circumstance. So let's dive a little bit deeper into what popcorn prayer is. It really gives everyone an opportunity to offer praise and prayer. So think about a group and everyone has an opportunity to pray. Not just one person, but every single person in the room. And you can either hold everyone's hand and pray and then squeeze the next person and that's a signal for them to pray and then they can squeeze the next person's hand and they can pray and so on and so forth. Or you could just randomly, spontaneously, everyone can offer prayer like popcorn, pop, 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 pop. And those beautiful prayers are heard by our wonderful Lord. So we want to remember that the Holy Spirit chooses the order to pray. You know, the Holy Spirit is with us at all times always. Again, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Lord gave us the Holy Spirit to help us in all of our circumstances. And so he is praying through us. And we want to focus on how it is that we can shift those thoughts into prayer and into praise. Everyone gets to take a turn. So we can also be thinking about I don't know, when you go to the movies or you, when you watch a show, if you eat popcorn, doesn't it taste good? So are you hungry for that popcorn? It's been said just like we are kernels, we're not edible as kernels until we change those thoughts into prayers. And then when we change those thoughts into prayers, then it's like we're pop popcorn and then our wonderful Father, Son, Holy Spirit can really embrace and enjoy our prayers. Just like we enjoy the popcorn, they enjoy our popped, fulfilled thoughts that turn into prayers for them. Such a beautiful concept to be thinking about. I want to encourage you this week in your quiet time, in your self-reflection time, where is it that you can practice popcorn prayer with your friends, with your neighbors, with your church groups, with any group that you're in? Practice offering prayer and praise. And if no one else is praying, maybe you can teach them that you can just offer up the thought, but offer it in a form of prayer. Say it to the Lord and it will help you to feel so much better and it will help everyone else in the room to feel so much better. It, prayer is known to change things. Don't underestimate the power of prayer for a moment. But guess what? It also changes us. And that's really more important than anything else, is that we 
get changed. We can pray over our circumstances in our life, but it's really important that we shift how we're being, that we be how the Lord is calling us to be. Remember, it's not our will, but it's our wonderful Lord's will for our life. And as we pray to him, he can truly transform who it is that we are. He tells us that we are a spirit, we have a soul, and the soul is comprised of the mind, the will, and the emotions, and we live in a body. We have so much to take care of. And when we can offer prayer and praise to our wonderful Lord, he can truly transform all that we are physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. So let's talk about the steps of popcorn prayer. So first, we can open up in prayer. Let's say you're in a group of people. You can just open up in prayer and just say, you know what? Let's try something new. Let's do something called popcorn prayer where we're all going to have the opportunity to pray. We're going to transform our thoughts and what we would say in our conversation into prayer and praise. And then we can begin to address the Lord. Abba, Father, wonderful Lord Jesus, glorious Holy Spirit, would you please help us with whatever's happening? Would you please help us in our prayer life? Would you please help this person and that person? And thank you, Lord, for helping this person and that person. So what's the point of popcorn prayer? What's the purpose of it? Well, let's look at this for a moment. When we practice this popcorn prayer, again, it's in a group where everyone in the group gets to pray. Everyone has an opportunity. It's not just one person praying. It's not just everyone saying words or reading words. It's every single person in the room. The Lord has made every single one of us uniquely. And so every single person in the room gets to offer prayer. I remember I was um, in a prayer group and I had my son with me and he was younger. He was, um, I think he was like 12 or 13. And we were all doing this form of popcorn prayer and it was really beautiful. And one of the ladies in the group said to my son, okay, give us what you got. All you gotta do is offer up prayer. And I just love that so much because it doesn't matter how old we are, whether we're two or 102, we always have room to grow. We always have an opportunity to pray to our wonderful Lord. He's as close as our very breath and he truly wants to have a relationship with us. So invite him into your heart and invite him to listen to how it is that you're communicating with him. Talk with him amongst everyone. You know, he tells us when there are two or more gathered in his name, there he is. So we know that he's right here right now with us and we want to remember that when we are with a group of people, it's such an incredible opportunity to pray together and give everyone an opportunity to praise the Lord and ask for his blessings. So what are the points? It simplifies prayer. It's, it doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be fancy. You just go into your heart and just say, hey, Lord, thank you so much for this, Lord. Would you help me with that, Lord? Whatever is on your heart. So for a moment, think about what's on your heart right now. If you and I were doing popcorn prayer, what would you pray for? You could tell me what's going on, or you can just ask the Lord to help you with whatever's going on. Get into the habit of shifting your thoughts into prayer throughout the day you will be amazed at how the Lord is helping you with all these circumstances. The other purpose of popcorn prayer is it really makes it very comfortable to pray for beginners. Very often, if a person is not in the habit of praying, they may just be quiet and shy and say, no, you go ahead, no, you go ahead. But it's a beautiful tool to teach everyone in the room to pray. It also incorporates the contributions of everyone in the group. So let's say there's one person that's praying. It doesn't give everybody an opportunity to add what's going on. Remember, the Holy Spirit is with every single one of us, not just one person. So when we open it up to allow everyone to pray, it's a more fully robust experience of prayer. 
We can rely on the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Uh, sometimes in the beginning, if you have a large group, it may just be better to just squeeze the person's hand of the person that's next to you after you've said your prayer, and then they can squeeze the other person's hand when they're done with their prayer and so on and so forth as you go around the room. But after a while, when everyone is used to this form of prayer, you can invite them to just spontaneously pray. Pick one person to open in prayer, pick another person to close in prayer, and that means everyone else in the room will spontaneously pray whatever is on their heart. There's no judgment. Remember, the Lord calls us to love. He does not call us to judge or convict. So we're inviting every single person to have an opportunity to pray what's on their heart. It's so beautiful to be in a room of everyone praying their spontaneous prayers that the Lord is putting on their heart. So there are some guidelines with popcorn prayer. Um, the first is that we want to offer adoration. We want to just feel our hearts opening to our wonderful Lord, Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and truly feel gratitude and adore him, feel incredible gratitude that he has called us to him. Then we want to go to confession, and confession just means putting on your heart what you've done wrong, maybe in the last 24 hours, the last 48 hours, and that can be silent. You don't have to say those sins out loud. You know, we're all sinners. We all make mistakes. We all derail. But the Lord has given us the opportunity to repent, which means turn around and then put all those sins, all those mistakes at the foot of the cross and then breathe in his grace, his mercy and his peace. Our wonderful Lord died on the cross. He was nailed to the cross for our sins because he loves us that much. He calls us to confess our sins every day throughout the day. When you've done something wrong, just put it right at the foot of the cross, repent, tell the Lord how sorry you are for that, and ask him to forgive you and breathe in his grace, his mercy, and peace. So when we're setting up popcorn prayer, you can just be in that moment of confession and you can just say that silently. Then you can offer thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, for the sunshine. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful weather. Thank you, Lord, for the day off. Thank you, Lord, for uh, having the money to pay the bill. Thank you, Lord, that my animal's feeling better. I don't know, whatever it would be, but thank him. And then supplication, which just means prayer requests. Lord, please help me with this. Please bless this person and that person. Please heal this person and that person. Whatever your prayer requests are, and then the last and final step is to listen. Praying is not just uttering words. It's also taking a step back, breathing, pausing, inviting the Lord into our hearts and listening to how it is that he is responding to our prayer requests. It's such a beautiful process. I really want to encourage you to get into the habit of doing this. Prayer is so important. Um, it's been said that the word pray has been written in the Bible, guess how many times? 547 times. And guess how many prayers are in the Bible? 650 prayers are written in the Bible. And guess how many prayers of Jesus there are? There are 25 prayers of Jesus. So the Lord truly wants us to pray without ceasing. He wants us to be in relationship with him. He wants us to talk to him, not just talk to our neighbors. It's important to be friendly and loving to our neighbors. And who is our neighbor? It's everyone in the world, really. The Lord wants us to get along with everyone, but he also wants us to have a relationship with him. He wants us to talk to him. So what is prayer? It's talking to our wonderful Lord and listening to our wonderful Lord and what it is that he has to tell us. So let's go uh, deeper into scripture and let's hear a little bit more about what the Lord has to say about prayer as we focus on popcorn prayer. And popcorn prayer, again, is being in a group of people, just like Colonel's Pop, when the fire is um, beneath the, the kernels, 
or the hot air is beneath the kernels and it spontaneously pops. That means that everyone in the group has an opportunity to pray and everyone spontaneously offers up prayers, prayer requests, and praise to the Lord. Okay, so in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18, it says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of Christ Jesus for you. Amen. I love this reminder so much. He wants us to rejoice always at all times, no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing, no matter what we're going through. You know, everything truly is either a blessing or an opportunity to grow. And I know those opportunities to grow are not always feeling so good. Believe me, I know that. But when we endure them and persevere them and get through them, the Lord is helping to grow the fruit of our spirit. And when he grows the fruit of our spirit, which are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control, all our hardships, he's growing all those beautiful fruit of the spirit in us. And then guess what? That is a blessing. So I know it's not always easy to give thanks for our hardships. It's not always easy to give thanks for those times of testing and those times of growing. But just remember that the Lord is growing the fruit of our spirit in those times. So again, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Have a conversation with the Lord all day long, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, no matter what you're going through. It will truly help you to feel so much better. In John 3, 16, I love this reminder so much. This is probably my favorite verse in the entire Bible. God, Abba Father, who loved us so much, gave us his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. Our Abba Father loves us so much that he gave us his son. And the son loves us so much that he sacrificed himself on the cross for our sins so that we will have eternal life, so that we can believe in him, so that he can be with us every moment of every hour of every day, no matter where we go, no matter what we're going through, and we can have eternal life. Right here, right now, I want to encourage you to renew your relationship with the Lord. If you've never done this or if you've done this a bunch of times, let's all do this together. It's as easy as A, B, C. A is we admit that we're a sinner. We admit that we've made mistakes. We admit that we've done something wrong. That's A. And B, we believe that our wonderful Lord Jesus was um, nailed to the cross and died for our sins. And then we can take all those sins, all those mistakes, put it right at the foot of the cross. And then C, commit our life to Christ. So we admit that we're a sinner. We believe he died for us. And then we turn around and we commit our life to Christ. What can you do differently today? How can you be more committed to our wonderful Lord? Listen to what he's telling you as you feel the presence of him in your heart. In Jeremiah 29, 12, it says, The Lord says, then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. Isn't that so beautiful? Our wonderful Abba Father is telling us, come to him, pray to him, and he will listen to us. Isn't that so beautiful? In Acts chapter 2 verse 3, it says, uh, they saw what seemed to be, we're talking about the apostles and the disciples, they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. Such a beautiful reminder that while the apostles were in the upper room, while all the disciples were in the upper room praying after our wonderful Lord Jesus died and then rose, they were all in the upper room praying together. And what they saw was tongues of fire, which seemed to separate and land on every single one of them. I have goosebumps when we talk about this. And that Holy Spirit helped everyone to pray. 
so beautiful. And when we think about popcorn prayer, we can be thinking about how the Holy Spirit is entering into every single person that is praying and offering up prayer and praise. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 21 through 22, it says, And it is God who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us, who has also put his seal on us and given us Holy Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. So beautiful. He anoints our head with oil. He puts his seal on us. And he gives us the Holy Spirit because he loves us that much. He wants to be in conversation with us. He wants us to talk to him and he wants us to listen to him. In Colossians chapter 4 verse 2, it says, Devote yourself to prayer, being watchful and thankful. So beautiful to offer up prayers, to offer up thanksgiving, and then watch what he does. It's amazing to watch. He's a miracle maker. It's beautiful to watch what he does in our life, in our life circumstances. In James chapter 5, verse 16, it says, the earnest pray of a righteous, uh, the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and yields wonderful results. So when we are earnest, when we are devout, when we are focused on prayer and we pray, watch what happens. It's beautiful and it's a miracle. In Matthew 18, verse 20, Jesus told his disciples, when there are two or more gathered in his name, he would be with them. So remember, when you are in a group, when there are two or more gathered in his name, there he is. So I invite you to practice this popcorn prayer. Invite everyone to offer up prayer and praise. Everyone sharing what's on their heart and talking to our wonderful Lord. It will help everyone in the room transform and will help everyone feel so much better. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10, it says, That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in insults, in hardships, in persecution, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Such a, a beautiful reminder, like we were talking before. Oh, all the testing, all the hardships. I know it doesn't feel good. It's awful. But when we can embrace it and remember that truly when we are weak, that's when he's strong in us. When we cannot do one more thing, that's when he helps us in all our circumstances. It's so beautiful to watch and see how he's working. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, he's with us at all times, always. And all we need to do is to call him right into our heart. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, it says, If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. So beautiful. He's asking us to stop what we're doing and turn our faces to him and pray, offer prayer, repent for our sins and ask him to transform us and pray for all that's happening in our life and in our life circumstances. And he will be there listening to us and healing our land. In Matthew 21, 22, it says, and whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. So remember, while we're praying, we don't wanna just utter words. We wanna have heartfelt connection, conviction, and knowing that our wonderful Lord is truly hearing our prayers. And as we do, we ask him to increase our faith, hope, and trust in him. And we'll uh, end with, let's see, what, a couple more verses. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, let us 
with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that he may, uh, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Again, Hebrews uh, chapter 4, verse 16, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Get into the habit. Always, always, always pray without ceasing. We don't have to just think those negative thoughts. We can put those negative thoughts at the foot of the cross and ask the Lord to help us in all our circumstances. And we'll end with Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. That means all the believers. He wants us to pray without ceasing. He wants us to pray for everything and everyone. He wants us to be in connection with him. So this week in your quiet time, in your self-reflection time, in your journal time, I encourage you to see how it is that you can feel the Lord in your heart, invite him into your heart, and talk to him. Increase that conversation with him and increase your capacity to listen to how it is that he's working in your life. And also when you're with a group of people, whether it be on the phone or whether it be in person, see if you can set up some popcorn prayer, inviting everyone to go around the circle and offer praise and offer prayer. But instead of just talking about it, see if it can be shifted to talking to the Lord. It will help you and everyone in the room feel so much better. It will truly help everyone transform. I hope that this message was helpful for you today. I am praying for you every single day, and I ask that you please pray for me too. I would love to hear from you if you have any comments or questions, or if you would like to schedule a session to go deeper. I am a clinical pastoral counselor, a nurse, a life coach, and a therapist. I would love to hear from you, and I would love to work with you. You can reach out to me on my website, toolsforliving.net. That's tools, the number four, living.net. I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.